my name is Laura and welcome to my channel Boundless Books. For my inaugural YouTube video I thought I would go into my top 10 books of all time so you guys can get a little bit of a sense of the kind of books that I like to read. So let's get started with this list. And I should mention before I dive into this list actually that this is in no particular order. It was hard enough compiling a list of my top 10 of all time. It was not doable to actually arrange these in the order of preference. First up on the list is the Farseer Trilogy by Robin Hobb, and this series is comprised of Assassin's Apprentice, Royal Assassin, and Assassin's Quest. Now if the fact that the word assassin is in all the titles didn't already hook you, uh, the series follows a young man named Fitz. He is a royal bastard and he grows up in the shadow of a bunch of court politics and intrigue and at night is secretly being trained as an assassin. What makes these, these novels so intriguing for me is the wonderful magic system that Robin Hobb created. And there's even an additional two trilogies that follow this one if you love the world and love Fitz as a character, which why wouldn't you, let's be honest. Next up on the list is The Beacon of Alexandria by Gillian Bradshaw, or Gillian Bradshaw, I'm not quite sure how to say it, but I love her all the same. This series takes place at the fall of the Roman Empire and follows a young woman named Therese, who to escape an arranged marriage, flees to Alexandria to pursue her dream of studying medicine. What I really, really like about this novel is all the wonderful historical detail that Gillian Bradshaw go goes into, uh, really diving into a lot of the medical history and medical practices of the time. There's also a bit of a love story, which is by no means uh, the center of the plot, but kind of a good bonus to have there. Sadly, it is out of print, but you should definitely go and hunt it out on Amazon if you're at all interested. Next up on the list is The Tamir Triad by Lynn Flewelling. And this series is comprised of The Bone Dolls Twin, Hidden Warrior, and Oracle Queen. This series follows a young woman who is disguised as a boy at birth in order to protect herself and fulfill a prophecy. This book is really, really interesting because it involves fantasy, but also has a little bit of a horror aspect. The main character, Tobin, is actually haunted by the ghost of her of her dead brother. And brother is one of the creepiest characters that I've ever read, and I don't really go for the creepy, but Lynn Flewelling does a really good job of weaving this into the story and making it really fascinating and suspenseful. Next up on the list is another series with the word bone in the title. I guess I really like, you know, macabre books. Um, and this is The Bone Season. This series follows a young woman named Paige Mahoney, and she's living in a future alternate version of London where people have psychic abilities, but those are strictly forbidden by the government. Uh, and instead, the uh, city of London is broken up into various gangs, and each gang member has psychic abilities. At the beginning of the first novel, Paige is apprehended and taken to a colony where uh, various psychics uh, are incarcerated. This was one of the more interesting and innovative science fiction fantasy novels that I've read in recent years. Really, really enjoy it. Unfortunately, this series is not complete yet. There are only two books out, um, and I think it's supposed to be seven parts in total, so I'm kind of dying waiting for the rest, but you should definitely still pick it up and read it if you're at all interested. Switching gears a little bit, number five on the list is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey Niffenganger. I don't normally go for contemporary uh, novels, but this does bring an element of sci-fi and fantasy in it. If you're not already aware what this book is about, it's about a man named Henry Tadamble, and he is a time traveler. So the book has a really interesting narrative structure, as it jumps back and forth between his childhood, his uh, adulthood, his years as a teenager, um, following the disjointed life that he leads as a time traveler who's constantly traveling back within the span of his own time frame. It's also a somewhat heartbreaking novel. Uh, I think this is one of the only novels that I cried when I got to the end of, but it was still really, really worth it. Love this book. Number six on the list is the Angel series by Sharon Shin. The series uh, takes place on a world where there are these powerful beings, uh, which everyone refers to as angels. They have wings, they can fly, they can seemingly communicate to a god, they can control weather patterns, uh, send down medicine from heaven. However, everything is not as it seems on this world. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but suffice to say this is sci-fi, so you can imagine that the whole angel thing is a little more complicated than I've laid out here. Each book in the series follows a different set of protagonists, and it's just really cool to kind of see the mystery unfold across all three books in this trilogy. Next up on the list is the series The Sword, The Ring, and The Chalice by Deborah Chester. 
I love these books. I hate the cover of these books. Really terrible. Makes them kind of look like a Harlequin romance novel, but I can promise you that's not even close to what they're like. Picture more Lord of the Rings than a Harlequin romance. They're really great, but they have, yeah, an atrocious cover, so please look past that. These books follow a half-elf named Faldane, who, unbeknownst to him, is actually the heir of a contested throne. Um, and he's living in exile in the neighboring kingdom. There's a lot of magic, there's a quest, there's politics and court intrigue. They're really great books all the way around, and I've read them a number of times. I will just caution that the first 100 pages of the first book are a little awkward. They provide a lot of the backstory, so they're vital and you can't skip them. But the series really picks up when the narration switches to Faldane's perspective. So just stick with it and get through those first 100 pages. I promise, it's worth it. Number eight on the list is the Seven Waters Trilogy by Juliette Marillier. I really love Juliette Marillier. She uh, writes a lot of beautiful Irish folklore inspired novels and this trilogy is no exception. This story follows a young woman who, in order to save her brothers from an evil enchantment which has turned them into swans, must take a vow of silence and then weave thistle into sweaters in order to release them from this curse. I really, really love the first two novels in the series. Uh, they're lovely. The third novel, I find the protagonist a little hard to handle, but each book is a contained storyline, so you don't necessarily need to read them all or read them in any particular order. Number nine on this list is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I really couldn't create a list of top ten without her. I am a huge fan of Jane Austen. I was actually an English major in college, so I read a lot of Jane Austen. But Pride and Prejudice remains my favorite novel of hers and I must admit that I've seen the BBC production of Pride and Prejudice with uh, Colin Firth a number of times, more than I'd probably like to admit publicly. And last, but certainly not least on this list, is Harry Potter. Yes, that's right, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Harry Potter is really one of the first novels that I ever read that got me excited about reading. I really wasn't much of a reader beforehand and uh, it kind of sparked my love for all things fantasy and sci-fi, and for that, I will forever love it. Thank you so much for sticking with me through my list of top 10 books. Uh, please let me know in the comment section below what your top 10 books of all time are, and also if you've read any books on this list and what you think of them. Also, don't forget to subscribe, I'll be posting more videos. Next week I'll be posting a video of my highly anticipated books in 2016, so if that interests you, please make sure to subscribe and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Top 10 books of all time, as difficult as that is to, uh, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs>